albatross around the neck. No more like a millstone. A plumbing stone, by God. Damn them all. Hey everyone, welcome to uh, a new episode of The Heart of Horror. Uh, I am one of your hosts, Bo. With me, as ever, is the uh, multifaceted, the um, courageous, the occasionally violent Kate Pollock. <laughs> I'm always so intrigued to see what uh, what you come up with. with these things. <laughs> I'm not for the for the fake news. I'm not courageous whatsoever. I'm, yeah, I'm a big pussy. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. So we were recording this, um, but when you're listening to this, when it comes out, it's been less than a week since um, we lost. Uh, you know, uh, uh, we lost one of our friends. We lost Boz Bozier, uh Loan, and yeah. um, I always screw up his last name and uh but buzz like our guy buzz and um it was it was very sudden and it was unexpected and it, it's one of those tragedies that that happens and i mean buzz has been around legion podcasts for a decade yeah you know uh we both recorded with him he is um an infinite source of joy and and his love of life and what he did and you know whether it was movies or music or or whatever passion he happened to be following um he always went in like full hog on everything didn't he yeah like you know, he didn't do anything like by halves and he always had, you could just, he was one of those people that you could just tell had such a love of whatever he was talking about, you know, because whenever, I mean, you know, we would always talk to him about film and stuff and things like that. And that was one of his great passions. And um, you just, you could just tell that he had such a love for these types of things. And he just didn't really hold back from that. And as you say, he was just like the lovely, I've, met, I've I was really uh, fortunate to meet him at Fright Fest and um, like in the flesh, like we've been chatting for a while, but already recorded um, a bit by then. And then like, yeah, we we finally met up and um, me and Matt and my co-host from my other show. And he was just so like, like he was just, he's like, you know, everything that you expected from having chats with him online or recording with him. He was just this big, energetic ball of just like warmth yeah you know and jokes and piss takes <laughs> yeah and just this great big smile yeah and this big beardy guy you yeah. know like <laughs> it just yeah um yeah so it's like we are gonna get we're going to do our regular show but it would not be right to let his passing go unmentioned if you have not um you know caught up to buzz like there there's a bunch of little pot of horror that you can go listen to and if you never have experienced the joy of buzz that still exists like he is still with us in a very real way like he 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 may be gone But what he gave to the world around him is is still here. And um, so I I invite you, please, please, please go check some of that stuff out. It is it's funny and and joyous and um, and like Boz himself, it was, you know, just a, a, a pleasure. And, um, you know, I was I told Kate before the show about this i was supposed to record with him this summer and um now i don't i don't get that opportunity and and i could not be more heartbroken for his family and the people who love him um and you know a guy like boz when he's gone it leaves a great big hole yeah um and but you know, 
It, it it's a, a fine reminder that we all need every now and again. Please, please, please do not take the people you love for granted. Yeah, agreed. Definitely. Um, so with our memorial being over with, let's talk about weird body horror <laughs> sex. Yeah. Dating ghosts mm -hmm. and people Terrible Tinder profiles. <laughs> and Tinder profiles. So um yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's let's get out of the 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 weepy part of this and the get to piece. Yeah. Um but I wasn't have wanted that anyway, even telling us all to shut up. <laughs> it's just like get to, get to the horror. <laughs> right, get to the movie because uh, you know, I mean Deadbolt Films I hear was about tits and I wanna hear about you know <laughs> Right. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. And shit. Yeah. You you could be talking about Debbie Harry putting a cigarette out on her tit and you know, instead of being all maudlin. Um yeah. but uh but yeah uh but yeah it's you know it's a blow um yeah particularly for i mean he's he's been such a part of this community for so long and yeah um it it you know it hurts he's been a constant yeah yeah one of those guys like i if if i had to put money on something i was like oh i will definitely go before boz like the way that i live my life holy shit <laughs> uh, yeah but uh yeah um so what well, we are talking tonight, though, about a movie that you had never had you seen this before? Was this one of those that you said you you hadn't seen prior to this? Oh no, I've uh, seen this film. Oh, okay. This is actually my third time reviewing it on a podcast. <laughs> oh, uh, maybe I was just confusing this with From Beyond. Um, yeah, yeah, I hadn't seen From Beyond um, or Senility. Before. It could just be that, Kate. I mean, yeah, you are very old. I'm quite old. I'm. <laughs> It, it's amazing i make it to the mailbox <laughs> well you have to kind of when you get there you do have to hold on to it and just pause for breath for a minute I, yeah i lean yeah. against it up both arms <laughs> on top of it <laughs> just... <sighs> exactly yeah. so yeah it's probably more accurate. i think mind i just sounded like something out of the film we're about to... <laughs> right yeah <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> Every breathing on the other end of the line. Yeah, I. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. Well, you know, I got to take the dog out sometime, and. <laughs> oh yeah, your little dog. Yeah. So. Aww. He is. He is less pleased because speaking of wheezing on the way to the lunchbox, I. Had, <laughs> uh, I was putting on what I like to think of as complacency weight. <laughs> oh, I got a real nice round of that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And so I was like, all right, well, I got I, I to gotta reel this shit back in. And uh, so we've been running every day. Have you? Oh, yeah. 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 I, well, I was doing that for a while anyway. And then, I you know. I running so much. I fucking hate it. Yeah, it sucks. It's the worst. It really is. Uh, Ugh, street running as well. I get absolutely fucked. No. I'm yeah. not doing it. Props to you, mate. Absolutely props to you. Because, no, I ain't doing it. Yeah. I'll it, just get fat. <laughs> it's, uh. Yeah, well, and the dog doesn't appreciate it either because he's yeah, like, Look, I'm just trying to take a shit out here. I don't know. Like, <laughs> all I want is a nap and a pee. Mm -hmm. And you're expecting me to at least get up to a trot. Because, like, I, when I say run, I'm like old man running. Yeah. You know, which is really yeah, yeah. sad. I, every time, like, I'm, I'm, in, I'm at the age now where I, I, don't, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. And so I don't care what anybody thinks of the way I run. But also, I'm well aware of <laughs> the image the that I paint. <laughs> yes. Like I, I don't have a Tom Cruise run. Yeah. I I have the you know, old guy with a belly run. Right. Trying yeah. to get rid of said belly. Um there's no like chest puffing puffing out for you. Well, all right, but see that's how things get fucked up is like when I come back, I have because you know the endorphins are going and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, that was good. I'm really I'm really making some progress and you know like oh, to laugh. <laughs> right like you know my <laughs> shirt's just like soaked with sweat and everything and i'm like yeah i'm you know i'm a, i'm an adonis and yeah. that lasts all the way to the bathroom mirror when i'm like oh right that's why this is why i'm having to do this yeah this is also why i'm sweating so hard and out of breath <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> and by the way like i'm exactly the same so any like laugh is, is more just of a projection of my own failure <laughs> keeping it 
like even when I was like really fit I hated hated running I didn't mind any other bit of cardio but street running can go fuck itself and I but I remember putting myself through it and just being like but like doing that <laughs> like really not having run for very far at all but being so conscious of cars passing so if I did have to stop I'd do that proper like runners like bend over like as though I'd been running like three miles in a row you know like, without stopping instead of just round the corner you know so <laughs> but I just like really go over the top so they think I've been like pushing myself really really fucking hard not just like oh, I need a break you know because um I am really unfit <laughs> um but yeah it's um yeah I hate I hate running I hate running I'll do anything else anything else at all apart from running yeah it it sucks but also I've got to walk the dog anyway yeah and so why not do that along with the you know like like I can get exercise and and walk the dog at the same time and it kills two birds with one stone and yeah you know, I can I can put in a solid mile and it doesn't take that long and it still does what I need it to do and all that stuff. Um, but, yeah, it sucks. I, you know, I just pulling the dog off of like there was a dead armadillo in the road today and it almost like sent me ass over tea kettle because he had stopped to, you know, sample the wares. And, I'm, I'm, I'm still getting over dead armadillo like that just doesn't that's not an english thing at all like it's just, every now and then you'll come out with something i'm like yeah you are in america aren't you like, yeah sorry. Um, <laughs> and we didn't always have them here the you know in the southeast uh of america armadillos are you know relatively new yeah um that's generally a southwest thing it's just it, it's gotten hot enough that they're like oh this is cool too yeah um, so thanks global warming for introducing this rodent population. <laughs> yeah. They're getting on in that real estate. Yeah. Yeah. But and it's seeing one flattened is crazy. Really? Yeah. Cause they've, you know, really? got that hard shell. Are they quite, how big are armadillos? Um, like a small terrier, you know, oh, they're shit. like, uh, I would say, let's say a foot to 18 inches long, about seven eight inches high okay yes yeah, so i'm just imagining like a foot long subway because that's how i measure things <laughs> sure sure imagine that with a, a hard little shell around it yeah. and an mm. anteater snout yum yeah it's um, and they are delicious <laughs> yeah i think we, we get like bad i think badgers are probably our equivalent yeah we we've got badgers but not a ton um badgers are usually like that well they're night creatures so you tend not to see them we get a lot of foxes as well makes me sad when i see a dead fox yeah we don't we don't have a lot of foxes um unfortunately do you, do you even get foxes in america oh yeah yeah, yeah. there are some oh, you do yeah. oh, okay just not they, they don't you know we don't chase them on horses with dogs or anything like you do and oh Britain. god don't get me started like literally oh it's not even uh you know no don't get me started <clears throat> i'm not doing it Well, I mean, were you about to go off on the aristocracy? Or yeah, like, yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I have like, oh, yeah, because like, oh, I'm not going to go off on it. But I used to live in Sirencester, which is like down the road from like Prince Charles. It's like posh as shit, and there have been run-ins. I'll just say that. I'm not saying anything else. <laughs> I you know I just recently obviously there was the coronation I'm not sure if you heard about this yeah. Kate but there was a coronation I mean, of a king only every time I fucking turned a corner I mean who could possibly give a shit at this point it like wasn't there oh. a poll that even most people in the UK were like ah, who gives a fuck no one gives a fuck like the only people that give a fuck are the royals yeah I don't even think half of them give a fuck it's so weird it's just, it's, oh, it's just, it's such a bizarre fucking, like, we've got, like, poverty here is at its highest. We've got, like, kids who are eating, I'm going to say rubbers, I mean erasers for American listeners, because I know rubbers mean something else over mm -hmm. there. Um, you know, and shit like that, because they're, they're, they're not eating, they can't, they're, they're getting, 
like no food and shit and like you know and they got fucking king charles poncing around in a fucking gold carriage <laughs> that look yeah, like there is that picture of him with which is the prince that is still part of the monarch in the family yeah. oh prince william all right so will it was him and william and camilla in right. his like fancy king chair i think yeah. they call it a throne is probably yeah, the yeah, right that, word. yeah yeah that's <laughs> king chair's way better though yeah. I demand a rewrite. Can you believe I'm an English teacher? His oh king God, chair, yeah. and he was wearing his hat jacket. King hat. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, his <laughs> his head pants. <laughs> <laughs> but it, that picture was like, what universe does this seem okay in? Like, th- so this... Bizarre. This is the most ridiculous bullshit that Britain has pulled since Brexit. <laughs> and yeah, that was agreed. ridiculous bullshit. This may be agreed. This may be even more ridiculous bullshit than that. It just it seems like some sort of sketch, doesn't it? Like some sort yeah. of comedy sketch. It, like I'll grant you Elizabeth, you know, because that had been all through World War II, and you know she was growing up at the beginning of the 20th century, and yeah. et cetera. Like I'll grant you that, but after she died, they should have just been like, "Yeah, we're done. We're good." Yeah, like we're good. We don't need like you know, it's all fine. Like who needs a who needs a monarchy? We don't really do shit anyway. Yeah, apart right. from sell tabloid papers, right? Like, Eliz- literally, that's the best thing that they can do right now is just. <laughs> get papers sold you and, know yeah. and she was beloved and i get that and um, you know like i mean i don't give a shit but you know there were people that were obvious like she she had lived a long life and had seen everything and you know her and her little fucking dogs and all that stuff like i get <laughs> th- why that would capture the imagination because yeah. a queen seems different to me somehow when it's like i'm king charles it's like go fuck yourself Oh yeah, totally, <laughs> totally. Have you seen all the memes about like Camilla being the ultimate side bitch? No, <laughs> no. Have you not? No. <laughs> like she's there in her crown and shit. It's just like fucking worth it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, because I may mean, I imagine everyone does know, but basically King Charles was having an affair with Camilla when he was married to Princess Diana, and uh, so it's like it's like for all you side bitches out, so all you side hoes out there, like you know, keep going. It's you know. <laughs> like it, you can you can get to greatness if you just if you're just patient enough <laughs> and like and she's just got this smug ass kind of like smile on her face like she's just fired and no one's caught onto her yet um <laughs> and uh yeah the memes i'll tell you what man like fair play memes are a bit of a gift aren't they <laughs> they can be there is like of uh... You can always rely on a good meme to lighten a situation. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you the the best one I've seen recently mm-hmm. is it's the scene from Hereditary with Tony Collette saying, mm-hmm. "I never wanted to be your mother." Yeah, and, yeah, I think I, I've seen it. Where and then she claps her hand to her mouth. And, <laughs> except the the in the meme, it starts beatboxing, <laughs> and that is <laughs> that oh, is I truly funny. Around. And I proper, like, I'll always have a little chocolate at the stuff that Court shares. So Court, for anyone who doesn't know, we'll go around all of the little, our little podcast groups and our little community and just share all these fucking memes. And it's so great. And um, and I'll have, like, a little chocolate. Like, ha, that's funny. Or like, oh, that's my start. Or whatever, you know. That's the, that, <laughs> that one got me proper howling. Like, it was just so left field. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's such an intense moment in that movie. And I just, oh, my fucking Christ. I just, I fucking die. Yeah. <laughs> Every, like, what, oh, so good. every now and again a, a meme comes along and i'm like this is why the internet exists this is yeah truly great yeah yeah definitely it was oh that cracks me right up uh, yeah, memes memes are definitely for the good yes um, they keep us humble <laughs> it keeps us humble um <laughs> so I'll, I'll tell you what let's start with the let's start with ghosted okay Cool. If you if you've got it at the ready, I'm uh, kind I've of got it at the ready. I do. I does. <laughs> yeah, all right. Um, again, again, I'm an English teacher. Does. <laughs> that's a that's a West Country special. Just be there. All right, we love you. Yeah, he does. I does. 
Ah, no, no wonder you guys it's got so out of the UK or like, out of the EU. <laughs> right. This is from, of all places, Lad Bible. Mm -hmm. Published in 2021. This is such a great headline. <laughs> Woman who has spine tingling orgasms with ghost is worried it might kill her. <laughs> Wait. All right. No, I don't want to interrupt yet. Sorry. No, go ahead. First thoughts. What's your first impression? So is the ghost trying to kill her so they can be together because of the orgasms? I don't know. I've read this headline and I wanted to save. I want live reactions. Okay. I actually haven't read this article yet. All right. But because it I'm, seems to me like we, we may have a murderous ghost on our hands who's like, I want to be, for eternity, I want to be with somebody who comes like that. Yeah. as well. Or if I'm like, if, bitch, if I'm giving you all of these orgasms, you best believe you're mine for life and beyond right you know <laughs> like i want to know like it might kill her it's like is the ghost gonna kill her or are these like mind spine tingling orgasms gonna kill you because i mean either which way right yeah um right <clears throat> so it says a woman who fell in love with it and in in like was it quotation marks a ghost um that gives her spine tingling orgasms says she worried she's worried her phantom lover might kill her oh okay so that, that's, that's that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. singer songwriter Pro brocard brocard is that a name b-r-o-c-a-r-d-e brocard brocard a all right you you work on that i'll work on brocard brilliant um connected with a ghost called eduardo when he <laughs> <Sorry>. eduardo. <laughs> Out of all the names. Um, when he revealed himself to her during a thunderstorm one night as she struggled to sleep. She says the spirit, a Victorian soldier who died prematurely at 35 after falling down a well, introduced, <laughs> introduced himself and has, been vis and has been visiting her regularly ever since. There's a typo on it. Brocard from Oxfordshire. Oh, she's English. Um, said... Um, I've always been fairly skeptical of the paranormal and things that can't be rationally explained. Over the years, I've had a few ghostly encounters, but I've always brushed them aside and thought nothing more of them. Until I met Eduardo, that is. I was laying in bed, unable to sleep. I rolled from side to side in bed, trying to switch off from both the storm and an argument I'd had with one of my friends. Then out of nowhere, I felt a warm sensation in my heart. It was burning hot. I touched my chest and it was roasting, clammy almost, and the warm sensation ran down throughout my body. And the whole room felt cold. I sat bolt upright. I had tears streaming down my face and was shaking almost uncontrollably. It felt like someone was present. I couldn't see anything, so I reached for the bedside light and something grabbed my hand to stop me. I heard whispered in my ear and felt someone's breath and a shudder down my spine. That's when Eduardo first introduced himself. Since then, Eduardo has, been, has visited Brocard regularly, appearing whenever she feels she needs him. There's a comfort and a safety that I feel in his presence, like I can truly be myself, and he has really deeply touched me. <clears throat> I bet. Uh, <coughs> she said, adding that she has so far kept the relationship private from family and friends due to fears of his being exercised. Hmm. Well, first off, you've not done a great job by going to lab Bible with it, have you, love? Oh, yeah. Okay. I, I've got breaking news. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Brocard, our, our uh, person in question, also the same subject of the article about the woman who complained that she had to pick up the tab on the ghost. Shut up. This is not the same person. It is exactly the same person because I'm looking at the New York Post article about her saying, um, da, 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 uh, uh, Eduardo obviously doesn't have a bank card, so it's always me that has to pick up the tab oh. everywhere we visit. And he certainly likes to go wild in our hotel room mini bars, says oh. closet alcoholic Brocard. I'm adding the closet <laughs> alcoholic part. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So she has, she has married this ghost. And this is kind of her thing, because she's apparently a musician, a, a bit of a visual storyteller as well. Oh, okay, okay. And and so she does a lot of, you know, spooky, gothy kind of kind yeah, of things. She's very kind of typical goth chick. But like but that Victorian type goth chick. Yeah. Yeah. 
So let me, all right, let, let me ask you this. Okay. So from the woman's perspective, how easy do you think it would be to have an orgasm with absolutely no physical stimulation? <laughs> Mate, it's difficult enough with physical stimulation. Sure. Yeah, well, because some guys forget that sometimes it's insertion's not enough. You got to work the clit, too. Yeah, no. Yeah, 100%. And also, as well, like, uh, every woman is different. Like, guys, you can pretty much crack out the same moves and they're, you know, mm -hmm. it's all golden. Girls, I mean, you can't, you can't even use the same moves on the same woman and expect the same result, let alone, like, so, you know, we get guys who are just like, oh, that move, like, usually works. It's like, well, I'm not that person. Or actually, today I'm feeling a bit bloated and you're going to have to try a bit harder. Or like, you know, <laughs> what, <laughs> you know what I mean? So like no stimulation whatsoever. I mean, I'm not saying it's impossible because I know that obviously there's varying degrees of sensitivity and whatever. But yeah, I call bullshit. Yeah. I yeah. call bullshit. Yeah. This seems made up. Yeah. Do you want to hear the rest? Please. <laughs> Brocard says her temperamental lover sometimes communicates by making flames flicker as they enjoy a candlelit dinner together, which apparently he doesn't pay for. Sometimes <laughs> even blowing the candle out when he's really angry, such as if she asks him to prove himself. When I try to relight it, it won't ignite. He'll just disappear. I get ghosted by a ghost. Ah, oh, she said the name of the, the segment. Yay! Um, hey! Um, days later, I'll notice love hearts in the steam on the shower. Well, Brokaw's music has been inspired by her unusual love affair. She doesn't want to reveal too much about their romance or sex life through her song, saying, no, I should just mother blab it to the Bible instead. <laughs> um, <laughs> our intimate moments are very empowering. He gives me spine-tingling orgasms. But while she enjoys the unusual setup, she admitted she does have her concerns. She continued, my biggest fear is that he'll expect too much from me and kill me, so I'm a spirit too. I love being alive. So deep down, I know our romance is only fleeting. I'm just waiting for the day he, that he blows out the candle for good and ghosts me permanently. Oh, she's taking a piss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, however, Brocard hopes other people can also find love from the spirit world like she has. She said, I think people need to be open-minded. Physical presence in the traditional sense isn't necessarily all it's cracked up to be. Many mortals are in... Like, you're, what, separate from this mortal coil? Many mortals are in relationships where they aren't actually present, and many love those who they can't be with. It's a difficult thing to get your head around, but perhaps some souls never truly pass, and maybe there are ghosts trapped in the afterlife who need love and affection, just like living humans. End of article. Mm. I, yeah, I think this is largely for show. I also think it's to try and pump up ratings for her music sure like i'm pretty sure that's numero reason for this i didn't i didn't oh like on, I've, i fucking forget everything so like i didn't even i didn't remember the names at all or anything from like that but that's so funny right she's still she's still making news still making news i have to see if i can find anything else i have to put this very weird puzzle together <laughs> great i feel like we are like uh, unintentionally becoming brocard uh like experts ghost, ghost writers yeah ghost right? writers <laughs> right well done yeah I'm pretty, um I'm pretty pleased with that. why yeah. do i always come up with the best puns at like one in the morning <laughs> although i do like the fact that she makes the comparison of like well this is kind of like a long distance relationship yeah and it's like well i guess i guess yeah but you know through astral planes yeah but but then okay so let me just say this this is okay. <laughs> so if you're in a long distance relationship mm -hmm. and you're trying to get off then you just work with the other person to do that like you know and we'll talk about like technology and stuff here in a minute when we talk about video drum but oh yeah nice nice little segue yeah right um yeah, 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 yeah. But you know, I, I'm a professional, Kate. I'll just sit back with my puns and not me. You, you fucking, you go. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, and yeah, so it's, that's on, like the comparison ends at the point of he is making me come. 
And I think you can make the argument like when you're when you're uh, in a long distance relationship or you're just involved with somebody who's out of town and both yeah, of yeah, you are I'm like, I'm kind of horny. Like, do you want to get off? And yeah. so you do a little dirty talk and, you know, yeah, a video chat with some in. yeah, something like yeah. that. Sure. But that's just and, you know, I don't know that I would call that actual sex, but I would certainly call it a legitimate orgasm. Oh, yeah. hundred percent. So that makes sense to me, but like that's where the comparison breaks down is because mm-hmm. you're talking to another person who's like, you know, and then I'm going to suck your toes. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Not to kink shame anybody at all. I just, I can't deal with feet. Like it takes a special someone for me to put their toe in my mouth. Oh, toe. Okay. For a second, I I, I thought... You said tongue. I was like, oh, we're not doing toes and now French kissing is out? This seems... <laughs> this seems rather prudish. <laughs> what have you done with Kate? No, um, no, no tongue before marriage. <laughs> no tongue before marriage, yeah. Oh, oh that reminds me of actually... Of a, I'm not going to do it. I've, I've got mine set aside today, but that did remind me of um, of a Tinder profile that I've seen recently. <laughs> All right. Well, we're, we're, we'll do that on the other side. Yeah, yeah, it's not one I've got for today. I don't even know if I, I think actually, I don't know if I even screenshotted it because I was like, actually, I don't want to be judging people for their religious views or anything. But I was just kind of like, okay, bro, <laughs> I think you're on the wrong site here. This is not what this is for. <laughs> oh, is it like a Tinder profile that's like, I think we should go out and hold hands? Yeah, it was like, um, it, it was kind of just like very religious. Um, looking for like it was something like god-fearing man looking for god-fearing woman um firmly no um sex before marriage but looking for you know happiness in all the right places or something like that quoting jim cunningham um Mm -hmm. it was something along those those kinds of lines and although it's very funny to me like i didn't want to be like coming across as i was taking the piss out of someone's religious beliefs Uh, but i was just it kind of made me laugh because it was just kind of like dude you know what tinder's for right like it's, if you want to go on plenty of fish that's where you need to be buddy not on tinder yeah yeah right there's a whole religious dating app for that yeah like go go do that if you want to find the long-term love thing and you don't want to be getting all up in people's grills and shit there's other places for that this is not here my friend you need to you need to find your safe place <laughs> that's what my tinder profile says by the way i want to get up in people's grills yeah and find my safe place uh-huh are you on tinder are you on tinder i am not but i don't rule it out i don't i don't rule that out that, that... if you need any help with a bio okay oh my girl i can give you an insight okay i'll i'll well, come fairness, i don't need you don't need it actually because through this fucking show we've become experts haven't we we're gonna set up our own little profile writing app business aren't we yeah i think i'm tim 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 yeah i'm not uh, like i'm no expert i would still run it past you though because you see way oh. more tinder profiles than me so i'd run yeah. it past you and I, I would be like what do you think of this pun yeah and then you would be like this is no place for puns <laughs> yeah absolutely this, i was trying to think of a pun then but my mind went blank unfortunately. <laughs> this is this is just about you know getting pussy right right yeah. and you, bro. and i'm not above it no i'm sure You'll be um, up in it. Uh, yeah, all up in those grills. <laughs> so, all right. So, speaking it of, to a very silly place. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, speaking of uh, silly places and using technology to get it. off. Yeah. Which is a, strangely a, a topic both in our wheelhouse and something we haven't really talked about before. <laughs> But when Not I was like this, well, yeah, and uh, like like we're experts or something. But uh, we are. Uh, I mean, clearly, when we were talking about Videodrome, uh, mm. which is the movie we are talking about tonight. First of all, I hadn't yeah. watched it in a while, so when I went back and watched it again, I was like, "Oh, this like the conversation about technology and sexuality and that kind of thing has become like infinitely more interesting." the the more time has gone by so video drum is strangely prescient as cronenberg tends to be yeah yeah um, it's it he's it's weird watching video drum i said i've seen it i've seen it a fair amount in the last couple of years um 
and I did watch it again for this because it was like it was interesting looking at it from you know looking at the relationship aspect I mean obviously that film it isn't subtle about its messages right. um at all like in any way shape or form um but you know I beforehand I was just looking at the film as like a whole with, with the, rather than like you know it, a specific angle um so it was kind of cool watching it this time because especially because I'm now like you know dating online and stuff um it was kind of cool to kind of like watch it from that perspective and it's just I've, I've you know I've said this before and you know I'll say it again it's it's this film blow the one thing that the, the main thing sorry about this film that blows my mind is that this film is what 20 40 years old mm-hmm and it's so relevant mm-hmm. now. It's so ahead of its time. It's so prophetic. You know, it's just like, I know Cronenberg is a bit of a Marmite, love him or hate him kind of thing. Like, you know, people either really get away with it or, or they really just don't understand what he's, what he's doing. But I don't think anyone can deny when you break it down. Like the guy is, the guy is a fucking vision and it's so like, I can't really think of a word to what I mean. I just keep just thinking good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's not what I, you know what I mean though? It's just like, it's just like the points that he makes, not only are they like really good points, but like they were relevant then, but they're weirdly more than not even more relevant now. And it just, it just blows my mind how he, he does this. He just does this, you know, and like crimes of the future, for example, from what was it last year? Like I can imagine in 20 years time, that being even more relevant because he just has this vision of of where things are going and fuck he's if he's not pretty much bang on the money yeah yeah i mean i i couldn't agree more watching it this time yeah like i said i was kind of struck by the relevance of it and also just like <laughs> this movie still rocks this is a cool movie oh yeah um, this is all cool but the all right so I'm trying. I think the place I want to start is the TV stuff, but mm-hmm. I, I want to kind of jump to the more relevant stuff to now. Yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, so if you've never watched Video Drum, slight spoilers for it. But basically, not slight spoilers. This is what happens at Video Drum. But so the whole <laughs> deal is that it is uh, James Woods is uh, basically a, a s- talent scout of sorts for mm. this you know local tv station and they're trying to get outrageous content that they can put on the air to get people to watch the channel and uh one guy that he works with uh who's kind of a pirate who you you know uses a satellite to try to pick up signals and and so forth and he gets um a show called videodrome mm. and videodrome is like um I mean, it's just S and M bondage, torture kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, and murder and things, and yeah, it's all in this one room, this one sort of set, if you like. Yeah, yeah, and uh, so he's intrigued by it, and you know, at, at one point, like he's he's talking to his buddy, and he's like, "Well, can we get away with this? Do we want to get away with it? Mm-hmm. You know, like is this something we actually want to put on the air?" And that I think is a really Im- like a really important question and because it's like you know with video drama it's like that whole thing of people you know the consumer just wants more and more and gets a bigger hit and a bit bigger thrill and whatever and then it's it's you know it's the jeff goldblum just because you can just you know should you yeah um i can't remember the exact quote so i just didn't even bother going i'll be honest it's fine <laughs> um but everyone knows what i'm on about um <laughs> you know like and and I think that that question is just as important as anything else that this film asks. Like, just because you have access to this stuff, like, should you distribute it? What's your responsibility with that? Like, you know, what's the um, outcome of that? And like the, you know, the reverb of that kind of thing, you know, the whole interview at the beginning and stuff like, and it, it asks this question sort of as it goes through and like, it's like, yeah, the two questions of like, 
there's there's two sort of points it's like should you and then also like at what point does do you stop and what point do you like how how far does this go kind of thing Mm -hmm. it's so cool yeah fucking great film (laughs) and 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 so he starts to investigate video drum but not before he has uh, a, a panel show yeah where he's talking about like sex and violence and yeah with debbie harry who is a radio host and it's it's not my favorite scene of the movie but it's one of the best scenes of the movie where it makes me laugh it's right because there's a moment where james woods is trying to be provocative and says like, "Hey, the re- the same reason we show what we show is the same reason that you wore that red dress tonight." Mm-hmm. And she's like, "What are you talking about?" And he's like, "That red dress, you know, that's sexual and alluring." And she's like, "You know what? You're right." Um, yeah. And then they just start to like they just totally ignore the host <laughs> and his other guest, uh, Brian Oblivion. Yeah, Professor Oblivion. Yeah. Professor Oblivion. Oh, it's so good and. Um, and just start talking about fucking. They're like, I mean, not not that direct, but it's like, hey, do you want to go it's get some implied. dinner? But, yeah, it's implied. Yeah. And she's just like, yeah, okay. Yeah, right. And so while the host is trying to rein in this show, they're just lining up, you know, their fuck session. Yeah. And she just turns to Professor Oblivion and tries to have some sort of semblance of an interview. <laughs> yeah. It's, oh, yeah. it's so good. And it's so funny. But yeah, so they end up starting this relationship. And Debbie Harry is clearly into a little bit of masochism. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she's got like cuts from previous lovers and stuff where she's like, yeah, cut me. Yeah. And, you know, and James Woods is a <laughs> a little vanilla, I suppose. And is like, I don't know if that's my thing. And so she puts a cigarette on her tit and then they really fuck. Yeah. And yeah. So it's this r- relation. And, and he shows her video drone. Or she sees it and she's like, what's yeah, she's, this? Yeah. And he's just like, oh, I don't know if you'll like it. You know, before he realizes that she's a masochist, like, oh, I don't know if, if you'll like it. You know, it's it's kinky and there's torture. And she's like, fuck, yeah, get that shit on. You know, like, yeah. She's like, you tell me about this. You took you this long to tell me about this. Fucking sit your ass down, boy. You know, like, I'll show you something. <laughs> and and she he tells her that the it, it, it seems to be coming out of Pittsburgh is yeah. where it's uh it, it's from and she and i can't remember if it's she also happened to be going to pittsburgh for a conference or something but you know she ends up going to pittsburgh and while there clearly is searching for video drum because it you know she's like i, I kind of want to be on video drum he's like ah you don't stay away from that shit yeah and um so that's kind of the the setup and then she goes missing and James Woods is bouncing around meeting all these different characters like Brian or uh, Professor Oblivion who it, it he believes has something to do with Videodrome which is true but he kind of tracks him down to um this like homeless shelter where Bianca Oblivion his daughter his daughter uses televisions to try to reintegrate people who are like homeless and living on the fringe um back into society you know that she basically says like television is society and so for them to sort of jump back into the pool they have to be part of it too yeah and so like you said it is not that the movie is being subtle about any of it but it is still like the fact that the movie is about anything puts it head and shoulders above most stuff. <laughs> um, but the fact that it is very specifically about, um, you know, television, our relationship to it and, and what technology does to us and all of yeah, that stuff. Like the consuming of media and yeah, that's yeah. what I had. No, yeah, like what, what you know, and when I was watching this, I kept thinking about something that Cronenberg said. Um, I, I think it might have been when he was doing interviews for, um, uh, oh, was it Crimes of the Future? 
Mm -hmm. And somebody was asking him about like, oh, now, you know, everybody has these microplastics in their body that like it's found in Antarctica and all of that. And what do you think about that? Like, is that apocalyptic Uh, as someone who's into body horror? And he was like, well, you you could look at it that way or you could look at it like this is just the new paradigm for humanity. And what might the what might the next evolution be based on that? Yeah. And, you know, what these children who are born to people who are part plastic, what does that look like? And, you know, just being Cronenberg as fuck about all of it. Yeah. And, and, but that's sort of what it reminded me of, of like Cronenberg. The thing I love most about his movies is that he doesn't seem to have a moral position as much as it is like, Hey, this is a thing that's happening to our culture. Is it good? Is it bad? Who knows? Mm. But it's happening. Yeah. Yeah. Like he, he will sort of like, cause it's like, I mean, even in that interview scene, we're talking about, you know, cause the interview, it kind of comes at this and especially with professor oblivion, like there's this sort of like angle of, oh, uh, well, you know, do you not think that by showing these things on TV and then giving it, you know, access to the masses, then, you know, you're encouraging this type of violence and this type of behavior. And he's just like, well, uh, or you could look at it that, these people if they're going to do it they're going to do it and this is a healthy outlet for them that means that they can you know tap into those fantasies without actually going out and doing it in real life and both arguments are fairly valid you know and there's there's two sides of the coin to both of them you know you could look at either which way you know Mm -hmm. does violence beget violence does you know uh, or you know by allowing us like you know as horror fans you know like we love watching all kinds of messed up shit because it taps into that kind of primal instinct of fear and, you know, adrenaline and our, you know, as humans and predators, like that natural inclination for violence. And it allows us a safe space to kind of explore that. Um, and it's like this, you could argue the same here, like, okay, well, yeah, this stuff is a bit, you know, I mean, cause at this point he isn't like, um, done video drain on his channel or anything like there's not like you know um but like his stuff is like pornographic and it's you know exploitative and whatever else um and i imagine that there probably was a bit of like you know a bit of kink and a bit of you know oh get your handcuffs out girl kind of thing um and you know and he, he's like well you know it's this sort of deviant behavior so to speak like is it not better that we give people an outlet here as opposed to them going out and raping a girl on the street or something? And I, I think that's quite a, like an a, a interesting discussion. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. So just to like traipse our way through the plot of this thing. Mm-hmm. So he, um, after finding Bianca Oblivion, he finds out that Professor Oblivion is actually dead. And his has like there's just a room full of shelves and shelves of videotapes that he's recorded of himself, mm-hmm. and so even the talk show was a recording of him. Mm, yeah, and then she starts to tell him about Videodrome and says, you know, Videodrome is dangerous, and the way he puts it is it bites, you know, mm-hmm. um, and. You know, the the problem with Videodrome is that it starts to give you hallucinations. Yeah, it creates a tumor, doesn't it? Yes. And that is what she says happened to her father, that, you know, he was working on Videodrome with some other people. And the uh, because he decided that he wanted to stop and basically go public with it because it was too dangerous, his co-workers used Videodrome on him, the signal buried in Videodrome. And uh, gave him a tumor, which is what ultimately killed him. And it's also what James Woods is going through. Yeah, he's suffering all these very visceral hallucinations. Yeah, I mean, thinks he's, you know, killing his agent at one point or one of uh, his his business associates. He's, Mm. you know, scratching at his stomach and thinking that a vagina has formed there. Yeah. And the good old stomach vagina. (laughs) <laughs> yeah 
and you get a lot of get a lot of cavi not cavities that's what am i thinking of orifices yeah like it, that bit like it just i always whenever i watch one or the other i always either suspiria 2018 when you know susie's like opening up her chest test yeah. vagina or there's a, like if i'm watching suspiria i'm thinking of video drum. if i'm watching video drum, i'm thinking of suspiria yeah and it's yeah it's it's crazy how you know like so much of cronenberg i think is tied to this movie and this and scanners i think are the two big ones as far as like this is him just playing with you know body horror in its almost purest form i haven't seen scanners oh you should see scanners it's good yeah I'll, I'll do my best. To yeah, it's and it's quality Michael Ironsides. Oh, oh yeah, he is in it. Yeah, yeah okay, I'll get, I'll get on that. Yeah, it's Daryl Revok, he's the villain of the film. He's amazing. Um, oh, yeah, I'll get, I will get on that definitely. So, and that famous head explosion scene, probably mm -hmm. first ten minutes of the movie. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not the big payoff. Oh, that is Ooh. up front. Oh, me intrigued yeah it's good but yeah so james woods like starts digging around in his stomach vagina and <laughs> starts having visions he of, you're right well look if it's there yeah you're gonna have you're gonna have an exploration aren't you you're gonna you know see what see what works right you know is there a stomach clitoris yeah asking the big questions here right that's <laughs> what this show is all about asking the big <laughs> questions um and the the biggest thing is when he, like the tv starts to grow veins and pulse and move under his hands and yeah you know uh and debbie harry sensual and sexy right and debbie harry shows up on the screen and it's like come to me come to nikki and he just buries his face in the screen which is also bulging out and whatnot yeah it's uh yeah it's pretty great oh and also as well can we not forget about him fucking his own vagina stomach with his gun yes that also happens and he loses the gun which yeah because then he pull he pulls the gun out of his stomach oh no no he had it already didn't he yeah he was he was stroking his stomach with the yeah with the barrel yeah no cool cool, cool and cool, yeah cool, when cool. he pulls it out it's just dripping with ky or whatever it's mm -hmm. uh yeah yeah Again, did we mention this film is not subtle? <laughs> right, right, right. This is all about, um, you know, That's stomach fucking. Sex. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah. and and it turns out that there's a not rival, but uh, sort of the other producers of Videodrome, um, uh, is a company called Spectacular Optics, run by Barry Convex. Yeah, and that they have been setting him up all the long and it takes a while like it probably took the second or third time i ever saw video drum to really understand what the like corporate intrigue part of this is uh, yeah that bit kind of tends to go over my head a little bit which like, i kind of get what they're getting at but yeah. right and it, it seems to be like uh spectacular optics is developing Videodrome and they want to get their hands on James Woods because he's having all these hallucinations but hasn't completely succumbed to them. And so they want to put this big helmet on his head so they can record his hallucinations to figure out why he hasn't totally lost his shit. Yeah. It's almost like a VR headset. Yeah. Yeah, for like sure. If, if like Cronenberg designed a VR headset, that's what it would be. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, ahead of something like Existence, it it has some of that vibe to it. It does, yeah. And um, so Spectacular Optics wants um, to basically use Videodrome as a way to get rid of a big chunk of the population who are weak. Because they, uh, you know, they talk about how the world is becoming a, a more difficult and challenging place and that, you know, people just sitting around looking at bondage porn are just horrible people. And so why not destroy them? Right. Right. Whereas the Bianca Oblivion 
thing seems to be no 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 this is the next evolution in, in humanity and james woods as someone who has sort of incorporated the mutation of the video drum signal into his body is the first step in that evolution yeah and also they start shoving cassette tapes into his stomach vagina which makes him an assassin yep and so he kills everybody who works at his channel at one point, but then Bianca Oblivion shoots him in the stomach so that it destroys the tape in there that is controlling him. And she says, no, 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 I have new programming for you, which is the famous line, death to Videodrome, long live the new flesh. And yeah. so he's going to go kill uh, his former partner who was setting him up as well as... Um, very convex yeah and which he kills his old partner by uh when his partner puts a pulsing living veiny videotape into his stomach vagina yeah um he does some you know video drone magic and when the guy pulls his hand back it's like an old style potato masher grenade fused to his arm yeah and it blows him up which is pretty great it's like <laughs> And, and and the movie kind of ends with James Woods going to this, like, after he kills um, uh, Barry Convex at this big, you know, eyeglasses convention, because Barry Convex is also a purveyor of eyeglasses and eyeglass frames, as well as Videodrome. Yeah. Um, he just goes to this, like, abandoned ship in the, you know, middle of a harbor finds a television and Nikki says, Hey, you've done as much as you can with this body. So you have to take the next step. And he says, um, you know, death to Videodrome, long live the new flesh and blows his brains out. Yeah. So, you know, a pretty typical story. <laughs> like you've seen this a million times before. <laughs> yeah. This is just a retelling of like, you know, little red riding hood. Yeah. With, the wolf being played by james woods very yeah. much so yeah mm -hmm. but yeah it's a like it's a super weird story and movie and all of that but all of it is in service to sort of the ideas like i think james woods is really good in this and i think some of the effects are still really incredible some of them also aren't <laughs> some of them aren't but some <laughs> yeah you're right there is a mixed bag although rick baker does a lot of the practical effects and a lot of that stuff looks really good I mean, in fairness, it is. I think it's all practical, really, isn't it? So, yeah. Like you know, I'll never, I'll never be too snobby about that because I always like I would rather a not so sharp practical effects, like than them putting something like CGI in this film. Not that they would have really had that bad then, but like you know, hypothetically, I love a practical effect. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, Debbie Harry is, is, is good in it as well as this sort of, you know, this BDSM siren calling to him. And, <laughs> um, but it's more about the ideas. It's more, you know, as with most Cronenberg stuff, it's more about what he is trying to explore. You know, he doesn't really offer any answers. Like we said, it's just what what is this fusion of sexuality and humanity and um heck right and and human beings and like how does that affect us and, mm. and all of that and you know i think what he was getting at initially was i think somebody in the movie says uh i think it's bianca oblivion talking about her father's philosophy but it was like uh what happens in public on television is more real than what happens in private yeah. between people. Yeah. No, that, yeah. Uh, such a good line. And like, it's kind of yeah. true. Right. Well, I mean the, the rise of reality television and all of that, it, and you know, it, it is a thing that has, right. Right. And, so yeah social media in particular um but in terms of the the sex portion of it like at the time that he was doing this uh movie in you know was it 83 yeah yeah 83 
Yeah, this forty years old. This movie is that's that is crazy. crazy. Um, but in eighty three, you know, yes, you had these pirate channels broadcasting some you know pretty crazy sexual yeah. stuff. But now, I mean, technology has become such a part of yeah. sex. You know, I mean, we talk about, um, you know, on Tinder is the flesh. All of that stuff is like, here is an app to go get yeah, fucked. Definitely. And like things like OnlyFans. And like, you know, we have so many different um, online social media accounts which are just designed for sharing sex and smart and fantasies and role plays and, you know, loads of stuff like that and it's all and not only is it like it's so readily available it's so plentiful it's also normal it's so normal like no one cares i remember um you know when i've been single in the past being so careful about making sure if I sent a nude to someone who I didn't necessarily, like who I maybe wasn't in a relationship with, making sure that like my face was no, there was nothing you could tell that it was me in case he showed it to someone. Now I'm like, go ahead, just make sure I get paid for it. You know? <laughs> like there is nothing that like, no one, no one cares anymore. No one, you know, and, and in a way it's kind of good because I think it kind of, it speaks to, acceptance of um you know body norms and you know and like you know that kind of like concept of things like free the nipple like you know being okay with our sexualities and not just in terms of like you know how we identify sexually but also just in terms of our own sexuality um and our confidence in our bodies and be like you know like again like you know not even that long ago like maybe it's like 10 15 years ago there was a real kind of like slut shaming sort of attitude when it came to you know having that body confidence if you were going to do like you know some nudes or you know go and do one of those like boudoir shoots or whatever and like or if you wore something that was particularly evocative or revealing it would be there would be like a shame about it be something you'd have to do in secret and like giggle behind your hand about whereas like now it's just like you know, post something up online and all your mates going like, yeah, girl, fucking work it. Look at that. You know, you know, and like, <laughs> everyone's going like, fuck yeah. Like, and oh, like you even get shit like, oh, you're so brave. Like you're such an inspiration. I'm like, all I did was get my tits out. Do you know what I mean? Like, I mean, <clears throat> I say me, no one I know. Um, but like friends, friends of, my... of yours, people you've read about. <laughs> um, but like, you know, it's not, it's, there's a real like normality to it. And like, in a way it's kind of, it's kind of sad in a way just because everyone just is so jaded but at the same time like it's also great because like why shouldn't we celebrate our bodies why shouldn't we celebrate our sexualities why shouldn't we you know for people who want to see it and for people who are interested share that with people and have it shared back and in a healthy way as long as it's a healthy way and obviously you know especially with social media when it comes to things like filters and, and Photoshop and stuff, it can become very unhealthy. It can become, you know, a, a really sort of like negative impact on certain people. But like at the same time, it's like with anything and like what this film talks about, it's just like, okay, but there's a responsibility shared there. Like, you know, if you're not happy with people, you know, airbrushing their photos and shit, then, okay, if you want to do that, don't, don't, don't do that then. And you be, the the person who you know bears off so to speak you know um or like or don't do it at all if you don't want to and and you know and that's fine too it's 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 having that it's this it's the two sides of that coin kind of thing and then i and i think this is like a lot of what this film is sort of about it's like you know you have this angle um where yes we could go down this route but you also have this side where we could go down this route and actually what is just inevitable and what is just human nature and like maybe we shouldn't fight it so much and we should just kind of let our freak flags fly you know a little bit and maybe we might be a bit happier or maybe we might evolve or maybe do you know what I mean like it 
you know, the, if you think even like a hundred years ago, it was like, oh my gosh, she got her ankles out. And now it's like a hundred <laughs> right. years on, it's kind of this like, oh, so there's a girl walking down with like, you know, booty shorts and an under boob crop top and no one, bl- well, they might blink, but like, <laughs> it's also not unusual. Oh, there are blinks. Yeah, sure, there are a few blinks. I remember every year I'm just like, but, oh, it's pretty short season. <laughs> like, I'll be driving down, there's like some, like, I don't know, 17 year old, and like, with like, you can see like her entire ass. I'm like, oh, it's pretty short season. <laughs> the, uh, so, I, I mean, I agree with all of that. There, there has been this, you know, not just relaxation of inhibitions and so forth, but more of a normalization of just being yourself even though it's like you said you know sometimes people are like you're so brave it's like ah they're they're yeah. tits um th- you know there's nothing inherently brave about those yeah. um they're just, just sex. i mean um, yeah like i mean you know everyone everyone has i had this conversation today actually because i went to a, a christening um <laughs> there's, there's this so basically i was wearing i just realized how weird that sounds like talking about this and i was like a christening today and this is relevant to this conversation um so I was wearing a dress like so okay anyone who hasn't seen me in real life like I am a fairly blessed in the upper body area um mm-hmm. but it you know in some respects but it does also make wearing clothes a nightmare because it doesn't really matter what I wear these puppies are there in your eye view <laughs> you know like <laughs> right. I wear a polo neck it just looks it, it doesn't help it just looks like my tits start from my neck you know um <laughs> so i'm kind of like i've got this dress on and it's like it's a really lovely sweet dress do you know what i mean but you know the ladies are saying hi a little bit and i'm like Mm -hmm. oh it's church it's a family i'm like but do you know what half the people here are mums most of them probably breastfeed and you know what they're tits and like who gives a shit and if the priest wants to get uncomfortable well i'm sorry but i'm pretty sure the virgin mary had tits too so you're kind of gonna have to go over it like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna censor myself or be made to feel uncomfortable because of my body. That's just insanity to me. Like, why would I not want to wear something that I think I look nice in and I feel good in because I'm worried about other people might be made uncomfortable because I have tits? That's ridiculous today, you know? Like, and you know, I sort of like I kind of had this conversation with someone. She's like, Oh, I love your dress. I was like, Oh, I know it's a bit booby, but I forget fuck it. And she was like, No, 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 like. And I was like, oh, thank you. Like, she was like, no, no, you look great. I was like, oh, thank you. Like, I was like, I, 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 we then started talking about this. And, and, and I just sort of feel like, you know, boobs are boobs. Pretty much every woman has them. Like, you know, if they haven't had to go through a mastectomy or something, unfortunately. And let's be honest, a lot of men have them, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, like, why should it be this whole thing of, like, oh, we have to censor ourselves? Like, I think, like, to be honest, if we, if we normalize it, and normalize nudity and normalize sex and actually it kind of in a way it almost takes that edge off be, you know it's not this big taboo it's not this big kind of ooh, and you know in turn the psychology behind it changes and you know it's possible that it can affect like you know sex crime statistics and things like it'll be less because it's more normalized you know like it's not such a um, forbidden fruit, so to speak. You know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. And I just feel like by making things more normalized, even if it seems like scary or outrageous or whatever at first, actually it can actually have an ad- like a reverse effect of, of making things less sexy by being more sexy. Do you know what I mean? Does that make any yeah. kind of sense? I don't know if it's just like a yeah. 1 a.m. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, for sure. Cool, cool, cool. Um, yeah, and I just feel like with this film, like going back to it, it's kind of like the other side of what it's saying is that, you know, we we kind of expose ourselves and, and look for these, the next kick, the next hit, the next hit. Um, and actually, you know, what then becomes normal? Where's our baseline for normal? Where's our baseline for acceptable? And, oh, yeah, everybody does it, you know, kind of thing. And it's like, does it go a route of positivity like I was just talking about? Or does it go a route that's more negative where, you know, having certain base levels isn't enough anymore. You have to get more extreme um, highs, which are potentially more dangerous and more violent. And it's just, you know, it, I mean, let's be honest, we're human. We'll probably go down the violent and dangerous route 
but <laughs> you can't <laughs> sure. fucking yeah, help yeah, ourselves. Sure. So, um, but you know, it's like, it, yeah, it's like that kind of fork in the road, isn't it? I think that we're at at the moment. Well, and the, the other thing that's really different from how it, how it was before, isn't just the prevalence of it and the kind of pornography and that kind of thing. But when you mention only fans and, and the way that like, pornography has really shifted from this kind of passive i'm going to watch this movie or even these clips of movies on pornhub mm -hmm. or whatever and only fans is somebody actually interacting mm. you know that it's become i'm i'm going to have this perceived intimate relationship mm -hmm. at least like i'm trying to remember what the the term for that is where you have um you know Denial? like you as the viewer <laughs> well no well that but also uh there there's a scientific term or a social term for this feeling of oh i have this actual relationship with this person because i'm spending 20 bucks a month and seeing them oh yeah you know you know grab their tits and show me their their pussy and finger themselves and because I asked them to, and I'm paying yeah. for it, but also because we're, we're chatting, like there's a chat room component of it. And, and it's somewhat encouraged by the performers on only fans because, you know, they're in the business of selling themselves as yeah. product. Um, and so that's this interesting new dynamic where it's not just, like you can have this very, you know, real kind of sexual relationship with someone. I mean, you're not obviously having sex with them, but you know, you're experiencing titillation and you're communicating with them. And, and it's not that different than what we were talking about before about like, you know, just having sex online yeah, like or, or over the phone or whatever. Almost. Yeah. But it's not, but it's, it's purely transactional. Oh, yeah. You know you're going to read into it and... as much as you want to read into it. Like the person with, who is the account hold, like the OnlyFans content creator, like they're not falling in love with their clientele. Do you know what I mean? Like they're not thinking it's anything more than it is. <laughs> they, you know. Right. But they're, you know, they're calling people out by name, whether it's, you know, their, uh, their chat room mm -hmm. names or whatever. But it's like, I'm going to have this, you know, this kind of fake girlfriend relationship with you. And, you know, potentially dozens or hundreds of other people or whatever. And that's how I make my money because, you know, I get, like I know that there are porn stars. I don't watch a lot of OnlyFans, in fairness, uh, and I don't have a lot of experience with it. But I know just from, you know, cultural absorption, like a lot of porn stars have gone to yeah. that because it's safer. It's more mm -hmm. profitable. Um, they bring their fans yeah. with them and, you, can you control. know. You have a, you're more in control over what content you put out. You you are in control over who gets to see what. You can say no to something like you know if you're in. I mean, from what I would gather, like I'm not in the porn industry, um, but from what I would gather, you know, if you're kind of like a a freelance porn star, for example, you know, you're kind of you're sort of you're you don't have so much control because it's down to the studio, or it's down to the director, or it's down you know whatever. Um, whereas if you're kind of like taking that ownership of your own content and you're distributing it yourself and you're managing it yourself and you get to say who and how and what and when and how much then it it gives you that that power that control back you know in a way that maybe working in general porn doesn't i would imagine maybe i don't know 100 percent, but you know it seems to me that that would be the case um and you know yeah like there's like uh i mean newsflash i watch porn um i know i know guys just, just let Shocking. that sink in. You okay? You were good? Okay. So um, so I watch porn and like, you know, and more often than not, like you'll see a lot of the time, especially when it's like more of that, I mean, I say high-end porn, but you know what I mean? Like it's like a bit classier. It's not just sort of like some kind of GoPro in the back of a cab, um, you know? <laughs> right, right, um, right. And you'll often see like a link for their OnlyFans um, or it'll be like, you know, here's like, a minute of sort of two second clips or whatever go see the full video at my only fans kind of thing um 
you know and so some people they might just want to watch that minute clip over and over which is great fine good for you and then but then other people will want no i want to see the whole thing like you know oh yeah i'll pay whatever it is for that um and it's changing and like even like you'll get ads pop up because you know, obviously with porn stuff, of course you get ads um and it'll be like oh hey like you know are you getting bored of porn evidently not because I'm, I'm here but like uh, are you getting bored of porn well look up you know real life girls in your area or like come and chat with us online instead and we will help you get off whatever do you know what I mean like and it's it's again it's mm -hmm. that taking that it's not enough to just watch we have to interact you know we have to have a sense of realism and and that yeah that that interaction and and make it be as real as it possibly can be um it's not enough just to be a voyeur anymore yeah and and it's interesting you know the the idea that what we would consider pornography 10 years ago has become an ad for the only fans yeah. portion of it you know and and it also begs the question you know because because of technology and and we become more and more isolated from one mm. another uh, in a lot of substantial ways. And it, you know, what is the bare minimum you need to have a fulfilling relationship with someone? Can it be fulfilling of uh, personally to be in a relationship where the other part, <laughs> the partner in it is an only fan. Yeah, personally, no. Who, <laughs> Right. But yeah, I mean, I don't disagree with you at all. Um, but also, there are people that have to live yeah. that way, right? I, I mean, mean, this is the thing. It's, just, and, it's a service. Like, there are some people who don't have confidence or don't um, can't interact well for whatever reason. Or, you know, there's and this is their way of of reaching out, of feeling something, of feeling wanted and you know that that can only be a good thing as long as it's not going to take into an extreme like you don't want to, someone to get that like fucking this that fucking thing you were talking about i can't I think of the name either but you know they as long as it's not taken to a, a point where it's, it becomes an obsession then it's it's like it's like when i worked at a strip club um so i was a i, I bartended a, i can't remember if i've said this before or not um but i bartended at a strip club um fucking god knows how long ago um and you know, you would get these old timers who were widowed and they maybe didn't have people in their life in the immediate sense. And they would come and they wouldn't even care about getting a dance. They'd just pay the girl and they'd just sit and have a chat and they'd buy them a drink. You know, like you get, there was a couple of people like that. They, they didn't come in all the time, but usually like maybe once or twice a month. And they would just come in and they would spend all night just chatting because they just wanted company from a pretty girl who doesn't flinch when, you know, he he talked to them or and put put their arm around him and and just made him feel something for for a night, even if he knows on a level that they're not his, they're not, you know, they're not really there for him specifically or anything like that. But just to have a bit of human contact and a bit of human interaction from an attract someone they find attractive, like. You know, it doesn't have to just be old people. It could be people in a number of situations like that. And I think that's actually, there's something really nice about that, you know? So we're all human at the yeah. end of the day. We all like to fuck. We all like to feel wanted. I mean, most people like to fuck. obviously don't include asexuals, but like, um, you know, but like, you know, everyone wants to feel wanted though, for the most part. Everyone wants to feel desired and it, whether it's on an intellectual level or physical level, whatever. And yeah, I, th I think people are quite like quick to make assumptions or judgments on things just because it's a bit risque and actually it, it doesn't have to be salacious it can actually be actually kind of a, a tender thing too yeah so just to clarify uh or to to put a name to what we've been talking about it's called a parasocial relationship yeah, yeah that's right is, is your relationship yeah. with someone who is purely yeah. online um or, or like more particularly someone that doesn't really know you or know you <laughs> exist or anything like that but you have this very intense uh relationship with but yeah like like obviously there are there are people and more people every day i think just given the amount of time people spend um online 
that you start to have, you know, like these relationships that exist purely in that space. And, and so it becomes more natural and becomes more organic. Mm. And, um, so it's not crazy that, you know, people should, you know, whether it's, it's OnlyFans models or Twitch streamers or whatever it is, or VR, I mean, whatever, whatever it is that's getting you off. Yeah. But the, again, the, the big, uh, you know, the million dollar question is, is that personally fulfilling? Is there something, you know, psychological that that does not fulfill? And if that's not being fulfilled, what does that mean for your overall yeah. happiness? And, yeah. you know, unhappy people tend to do unhappy True. things. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, you know, and, I love my vibrator. Don't get me wrong. It's great. Will it ever replace sex for me? Absolutely not. Because sex is not just about having something up me. <laughs> It's all of it. It's like, you know, the contact, the kissing, the cuddling, the stroke. It's all of it. like, so for me, like, I mean, I'm fortunate in that I can get laid if I want to, you know, so like I am speaking from essentially a point of privilege if we're going to go down, down that phrasing. Um, but like, you know, I will never, I, I would never be satisfied with something that was just online. Um, I would never be satisfied from just being, I mean, I joke around, but like, men are redundant i got a vibrator who fucking else do i need you know I mean? like but it's not fucking mm-hmm. true um you know like you need i mean i need that that real human interaction i mean i am a bit of a traditionalist as well like i love books over kindles i still have cds and stuff even though i do stream as well but like yeah i've got blu-rays and shit i have a netflix but I, i'll always get a blu-ray too kind of thing so i am a bit more like or a bit less te- tech loving but um but for me, like, I just, I need that human, real human to human interaction that's, that's raw, you know, it's not, mm-hmm. not you know what I mean, um, you know, like I, I, it's not, yeah, raw dogging, <laughs> yes. it's not, it's not enough to just have it through a computer or a phone or whatever, you know, like, and I just, I don't know if. I mean, I guess it depends because, like, I'm of the generation, you're of the generation where, like, you've seen both sides. You've been, you've lived without technology, like, in the way that we know it, Jim. And, like, and you've, you've also lived with technology, whereas, like, future generations have only ever lived with technology. So maybe they are going to be, there probably will be a lot more um, easily kind of, like, satisfied with this kind of stuff because they've known it and that's all they've known and, um, you know, it's going to be much easier for humans to sort of evolve down that route as it goes down the line because tech just becomes, I mean, every day is something new, something more like smart homes and, you know, smartphones and everything linking up and everything being connected through Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and whatever else, you know, and and stuff like that. Oh. Like, it's just, why wouldn't sex then just become part of it? My favorite new technology... And by favorite, I mean I've never used it personally, but there's something about it that I find okay. just mind blowing. Is the the speaking of Wi Fi, like vibrators and shit that connect oh, to your yeah. Wi Fi and their remote yeah. apps for it, so you can like, hey, if you want to, if you want to fuck somebody across mm-hmm. the continent, and you know, it's not the same. Like you said, there's not the there's not flesh. You know, it's not it's not kissing, it's not cuddling, it's not the actual person to person contact, but you can, you can get a dildo and your partner across the country or across across the world. world, Yeah. Yeah. Can use this app to change, you know, how it vibrates and the pace of it and all of that stuff. And so you you can load up your music, you can download music and you can have it time so if there's like a song that gets you both going kind of thing like oh this is our fucking song like you could have that and it will like pulse to like the rhythm of that and shit like it's all kinds yeah like all kinds of fucking shit like when i was um you know dating the sociopath last year um Mm -hmm. the uh fucking amsterdam trip like when he was on about going to amsterdam and stuff we were gonna get one of those so that like while he was away he'd still technically be fucking me back in england kind of thing clearly that never happened um but like 
but yeah like I've looked into that and stuff and like actually one of the things that I've I've never really done um that I would like to do is like have so I've what I've, I have done is uh so my uh one of my exes oh keep it vague one of my exes um mm-hmm. had um had like a a vibrating egg but it, it had a had a a cord to it um so like it wasn't the most discreet of things but we went out and mm. we went for a meal and we had it under the table so there's like the tablecloth hiding our sins and like the cord came from it and he was able to reach it on the other side of the table it's like an intimate dinner um and he was doing that kind of thing but i really love to have like one of those proper remote ones where there's you know nothing it's just you know the egg up you and then you've got like the remote held by the other person and just go like a shopping trip or something you know or like the cinema or something like yeah i mean like something that's like really out in public and then like crack on that and just like not knowing when it's going to turn on not knowing like what's going to happen and stuff like that's just so exciting to me like that'd be really cool yeah so yeah some some ways yeah yeah, yeah. (laughs) right well and and that's the thing is that uh, you know you're you're missing the the skin to skin component Mm. of it but you're starting to introduce these new things like you said of of giving somebody this kind of sexual you know, if not control, then like certainly power. stimulation. Yeah. And, and, you know, that is, that at least isn't solo. That's not, I would argue that's not pure masturbation because you can say no at any time and just, you know, throw the thing out. But while you're, you know, with a partner, wherever that partner is, and you're using that device, both of you are engaged in mm. the act. And that is, and I mean, but again, that's not drastically different than, you know, being on the hotel room phone or being, you know, on Skype or well, something. Well, no, because like, you know, um, sometimes, you know, in those interactions, you'll have a partner tell you what to do. Like, it'll be a, like a, like a dynamic like that, where it's like, I'm only going to do what you tell me kind of thing. Like, you know, and, and although it's not exactly the same because you know the other person could just easily not but like you know it's it's giving that other person that sort of control and um and power to be able to you know affect how and when you're aroused and things like that but like just without a remote control (laughs) yeah 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 Yeah. and 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 that can be really that can be really fun and also surprisingly you know satisfying if you're doing it with Mm. the right person like if you have a connection with them and it you know again not skin to skin it it lacks that certain thing but but it can be pretty good it can be all right you can't you can't actually get together like in real life um then it's yeah it's not bad contingency is it (laughs) <laughs> right there are some options, are options out there for for uh for and it's something i've i've kind of wondered about of like how much if you were involved with someone that wasn't around the corner mm. from you you know and you couldn't fuck all the time but you could sometimes yeah. you know and so the like and so you had that relationship where like a few times a year you got together and just spent a weekend just yeah. fucking and and then did the other stuff in between like how real and satisfying a relationship is that yeah i'd say that would like i mean i don't think i could go that long without having real sex in that way but like sure. if that was if you were like but if it was like someone, every two you, like, months someone, yeah and like you could use the kind of like the over the phone or video calls or whatever like it's foreplay almost you know get yourself riled up and whatever and then when uh-huh. you kind of like you know you are able to actually fuck like can you imagine like that fucking release of build up tension just like like you could argue right. like if, if really you're better than if you saw each other all the time probably would be it, right that's that's kind of what i've been thinking is you know um if you're if you're with somebody 
every like like I said, like say every two months, every two yeah. to three months. So it's not like you're just going years without fucking. I was struggling for six weeks. You're right. Well, <laughs> you know, so, some of us aren't as lucky as we <laughs> Some of us aren't on Tinder at 2 a.m. So it's like, swipe, the, swipe, swipe, right. swipe, swipe, <laughs> But yeah, but if, if so, like you've got this standing date of like every two months, we're going to carve out a weekend to just get together and like go out to dinner and fuck and do all the stuff that we don't get to do yeah. in between. And then the in-between stuff is using that kind of technology. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, and like you said, it's just like this extended period of foreplay. And I have no experience with this. It's just stuff that I was I, like, uh, I was thinking about in terms of like, well, long distance relationships have changed. Yeah. And as I started to chase that idea, it was like, well, but what if the long distance relationship wasn't just we never see each other, but you see each other just enough so that every, you know, six weeks, eight weeks, whatever it mm. is, you get together and just, it releases. Yeah. And, you know, and then it's almost like, you know, you get all these little mini honeymoons, mm, yeah. you know, through, throughout the yeah. year. Um, I don't, I like, again, I can't speak to how satisfying that might be ultimately as a relationship. Yeah. But I could definitely see it being like, oh, that was some good sex. You know, this thing's been brewing yeah, for like that's a really nice two, two or three months. Like a friends with benefits type situation. You know? Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, you just, yeah. like, kick it afterwards, kick it back with some beers or whatever and, like, chill out and, like, you know, and then go again kind of thing. And, then, like, that kind of situation I think would probably work better as that as that scenario as opposed to maybe a relationship because because if you've only got like a weekend and stuff and you've got you know you want to get physical and maybe go on a date and things but you know you don't it's not really gonna allow for time for much else you know you ain't gonna be necessarily seeing friends or visiting family or you know discussing the bills <laughs> or anything right, like that right, but like right, right. It certainly is like a friends with benefits type situation where like you know and you have like a, a pre-existing good relationship already you know there's a trust there's a connection there and like you know stuff in common and whatever but then like you know you just sort of do a bit of teasing during that kind of two month period or whatever and then like bam and then it's like awesome that was fun i'll see you in june great <laughs> you know like that kind of thing that's kind of cool yeah right like i'll talk to you in a in a day or two and we'll, we'll start, start over again right 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 we'll we'll throw a couple of coals in the in the uh mm -hmm. furnace and let this thing start yeah. building again. Well, like, that sounds great, and actually. Maybe I'll go see if I can work something like that out for myself. <laughs> it, it, right. It, like, I, again, I don't know that it's something that, like, I don't know you want to do it no. your whole life. But I could definitely see it be, being a thing that you did as, you know, as, certainly a side uh, thing yeah. for a while. Like a year or two. Like, if you don't want to be, um, like, fully committed to a relationship, but, you know, girls got needs. That's fucking ideal, really, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Well, I was thinking of... Uh, guys got needs yeah, you know what i'm okay. saying i don't I, I, yeah, no, are I, you sure i get i could get more i specific. mean go ahead just for my entertainment if you really want to <laughs> um i'm talking about oh talking, oh oh like, that's oh no I was, yeah. I was thinking of something else <laughs> um yeah i mean because that's one of those things like you know um i i remember uh some a, a buddy of mine telling me that his kid uh we, like hit like 17 18 and just jerked off all the time you know that it was just like he was gonna he was doing it like somebody was gonna pay him if he did it enough <laughs> he's down, he's down only five, <laughs> <laughs> right well i don't know that he's got that kind of juice but we'll see but i i was telling uh i was telling my buddy i was like hey you, you need to tell him to put some days in between yeah because that's where you know like if you want to pop the cork every day or every six hours that's great and all but it's it's the delay that really makes it all yeah. right you know like you gotta let oh uh, you gotta let that build up a little bit yeah bless you yeah apparently you're allergic to semen talk <laughs> i just gave myself one eighth of an orgasm it's fine <laughs> that's right nice. Like, nice. it's one eighth of an orgasm um Sorry. i don't know i think uh you know no, I agree. based on 
based on this conversation, you wait a couple of days <laughs> and it's maybe one sixteenth of an <laughs> orgasm. You know, when I was when I first found that out, I was like a idiot teenager, like a young like on the younger mm-hmm. teenager end, like fourteen or something. And I remember like trying to sneeze real quick eight times in a row. Because <laughs> I'd never had an orgasm by that point. Like and I was just like, oh no, that's like try, let's, let's see if we can sne- sneeze real fast eight times in a row. Like, that's not how that works. <laughs> Fucking idiot. <laughs> Go back to biology class. <laughs> I so there there was a woman I dated. The, um <laughs> this is just post orgasm discussion right. at this point. But um there was a woman I dated and she uh before we ever had sex, she was like, I gotta warn you. I have a very like when I come, um, I I act like a guy. What? What did you mean by that? It, be- okay, I'll tell that. You tell <laughs> because, me. Because yeah, no, no, no. Because I asked the same question. I was like, "What do you mean? Like, do you have to go get a sandwich or something? <laughs> do you have to high five me? Like, <laughs> and right, and but she said, "No, no, no. It's more that when when I come." Not not necessarily the first time, but if she like has a multiple orgasm, like a really bone deep, you know, I'm I'm going to absolutely blow my stack during this right. orgasm. And she was like, "As soon as that happens, I just want to roll over and go to bed. I just don't. I don't want. You don't have to cuddle me." You don't. We don't have to talk. We don't have to discuss <laughs> literature or politics. Hey. I just want you to shut the fuck up, and hey. I want to go to bed. I'm, I'm the same. <laughs> and then, and then it happened. It was one of those things where it was like, you know, probably our second or third time together. After we'd really found a little uh-huh. bit of a rhythm of like, oh, I know, I like, I know yeah, what gets know you off. You know what gets are. me yeah. off. Yeah. Right. And so let's put all those things together like we've done reconnaissance <laughs> and now it's time to, you know, enact plan yeah. delta where we use all of these little bits and pieces that I've learned. <laughs> and that's I what I call it. Very good. <laughs> and, and so and and she did she like she went off like a fucking roman candle. <laughs> she came once, then we fucked some more, and then she came again. Yeah. And then and that was the point where she i mean it was like the claw on the sheet screaming yeah. kind of thing and when it was done i was like you know are you more no. and she was like get the fuck off of me we are done <laughs> i'm tired and i'm going to bed God, if any guy fucking said that I, do you know do you, oh, have i told i don't think I have, have i told you the story it only happened the last couple of months where i went over the guys uh-huh. the guy's house and like Right, Tara, I'll start telling the story. You stop me if I've told it, okay? So, okay. Tinder, All right. right, obviously. Because I have to, right, what I have to also make clear is where I live, right, where I moved to with my ex when I had intention of staying with him, marrying him, all the rest of it. So I wasn't really thinking about dating demographic when we picked a place, you know? Um, and then I broke up mm-hmm. with him five months later. Well, um, and so where I live, it's basically either teenagers or families, Okay, so there is not a great day. It's a it's a dating puddle at best. Um, (laughs) And so this is why, if anyone's wondering, like, why the fuck is she like? Can you not just go out to a bar and meet someone like a normal person? No, because they're all complete fuckheads. So or munting, and that for anyone who doesn't know means ugly in England. Mm Munting. There you go. That's one for free. Um, And. so anyway, this is, I just want to caveat, this is why all of my recent dating stuff is, oh, this guy I met on Tinder, right? Because there's fuck all going on around here. So, um, yes. Um, so yeah, I met this guy on Tinder, right? And we were like chatting for a day or two and um, we arranged for me to go to his, right? Now, he lives about a 40 minute drive from me, which is fine. It's not a problem. If I'm going to get laid, I will i've driven way further than that to get a shag so um sure 40 minutes is fine um and uh so yeah so i i, I get there and um i'm dressed all like salaciously and whatever and we go up and um it, we basically just get straight down to it and it's fine and i'm giving him like some really good moves 
blowjob wise and whatever like <laughs> i'm giving him some good moves well, <laughs> but i'm like bringing my well, a game yeah, I'm, like, like, I, I, I'm, I'm trying, trying to, to do I'm it try, right like if, if i'm trying not to be too graphic or like detail oriented so anyway, yeah, yeah yeah no i get it um but yeah he's he's getting some good game and then like he basically like starts dragging me um he doesn't do anything by the way in terms of foreplay for me um so he just starts shagging me which is fine the shag was fine i didn't come mm -hmm. um but it was fun it was fun um mm -hmm. he then comes um the you know standard bathroom dash um and i come out after him because well need more time basically um and i hadn't really even gotten undressed like it was just kind of like yeah throw your skirt up kind of thing and um so i was just like right okay and then he i came out and he was like playing playstation and I was, oh that's bad oh, form i mean i haven't even got there yet um and i'm like that's whatever that's fine the guy wants to unwind by playing thing and like normally even if it is just like a hit it and quit it kind of thing like i i'm a cuddler you know i like to have a bit of a cuddle maybe stay and then if we see each other again great if we don't then fine that was fun whatever so i was kind of like half expecting for him to kind of maybe put the controller down like maybe pat the bed like come and have a cuddle baby kind of thing whatever like you know I, maybe not exactly that but you know what i mean um not only does he not do any of those things he kind of just goes cool that was fun i'll see you later and I was just like, I guess I'll just get my shit then. Not only that, but he lives on the top floor of a flat apartment building, like an apartment building, and did not walk me to the door. Didn't even walk me to the door of his room. Didn't even look at me as I left. I get into my car and I'm like, wow, that was the biggest fucking waste of my, my evening kind of thing. Like, it's one thing to like, not really care about my enjoyment because he clearly wasn't um but mm -hmm. also to not even have decent aftercare go fuck yourself and then right he had the audacity two days later to message me and be like oh hey baby do you want to come around and suck my dick oh yeah. wow and i just left him on red i was like bitch <laughs> you know like nah <laughs> So like, yeah, so I'm going like, oh, if a guy said, you know what? Yeah, a guy basically did do that. Do that. But like, um, but yeah, like, but at the same time though, like I can understand having a real fucking like, you know, good, strong orgasm and just wanting to pass out. Cause I mean, yeah, that's fine. But I'm also not opposed to a cuddle. Like if someone, if, even if I'm like about unconscious, if I feel like, you know, someone nuzzle into me, I'll be like, yeah, let's have a little, little cutch kind of thing, little bit of a spoon. Um, but I will pass out and, um, I don't want to say, I don't want to watch a movie. I don't want to chat. I don't want to, I just want to yeah. pass out and just let my body reset a little bit. Yeah. I, I had to like, like do the whole, like, well, do you mind if I stay up and read a little bit? Cause I'm like, I'm kind of, Oh, that was yeah. fun. <laughs> I'm not ready for bed yeah. right away. And she was like, yeah, I don't give yeah, a fuck. Do whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Like don't, don't, you know, practice drums. But other than yeah, that, but, you know, yeah. <laughs> if you want to, if you want to go hang out and watch TV or something, by all means, but like, I respected it and, um, you know, but also your story that like, this goes back to something I've said numerous, numerous times on this show and I stand by it. Gentlemen, it is totally fine. Especially the first time you're with somebody, it's not ideal, but coming fast Sometimes yeah. it happens. Sometimes you're just yeah. worked up. You're like, this is the first time we've been together. I've really wanted this. Things mm -hmm. get out of hand, literally. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you end up coming. Fine. It happens. But you got to work mm -hmm. with it. You got to, like, if you can't get it back up, you got to go downtown. You can't leave the other person. And especially the first time. If this is your first time with somebody, show them just a little bit of goddamn common yeah. courtesy and you know i don't even mind if i don't come it's not even the fact that i didn't come because you know as i said before women are tricky i'm actually relatively tricky you know if you don't know me and you don't know, you know you haven't built that knowledge up yet like it's you know it's 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 tricky you know that's why i'm not here like going, wow mm -hmm. 
I get, you know, I'm not, you didn't make me come, so therefore you're shit and I'm not bothered. It's more like just, but just yeah, yeah. make an effort though, you know? Like, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. Put in some work, like at least have a go, you know? <laughs> Yeah. And, yeah, and I'm not saying like go down on her whether she wants it yeah, or not. Clearly. Yeah, obviously. But just I, I'm just like make the offer of like, hey, that was great. I got a little too excited there. We, you know what can I do to to uh, make yeah, you happy? To... Just give it one yeah, of those. Yeah. That's and it. You know what? They might even turn, might, the offer alone might be enough. It's just the fact that you yeah. have considered them as you know, it's a it's a two way transaction. You know. Right. If you don't right. want it to be a two trans and, transaction, you have a hand and some lubricant in your drawer. Do that. You know, if you're not that right. bothered about the other person, then just fucking don't worry about it. And also, I'm one of these people, like, I really get off on getting people off. Because, yeah. I, cause, yeah, I'm the same. Because I need I, it for I, my ego. That's not even a joke. Uh huh. I remember um, someone told me that I was the second best blowjob they'd ever had, and I was like, the fucking what? <laughs> who was number one and how and where oh, did they it live it turns out it was a colleague um and i was just like fucking watch this yeah <laughs> and then i won <clears throat> so um <laughs> but i get i get i get real competitive like i'm not i wasn't even jealous i wasn't it wasn't like oh my god you fucked my body kind of thing it was more like bitch is not better than me get absolutely fucked fucking all right sleeves rolled up right we're going for it you know like <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm mm-hmm. a <laughs> like I have to be the best. So um, yeah, yeah you sure. Know. I mean, you know, just feed the ego. Just tell me I am. Like I'm not gonna know if it's true or not. Like just tell me I am. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, I yeah, I I like to I like to please people, but it really is for my own ego. But I also they don't know that, uh, so it's just like if you know if I'm putting an effort, put an effort back. Right, and you know, like you said, I'm just a people pleaser by nature uh, i'm like you know look I, like i know i, I know mm-hmm. i can come <laughs> you know i am uncomplicated yeah. that's not what's in question so <laughs> right right i'm much more focused on you know what do you like and and like you said sometimes it doesn't come together the first two yeah. three times sometimes you and which is yeah. which is totally yeah, fine. you just gotta be, be communicative about about that do you know what i mean like i'll never like yeah. Getting it. Like some some people, like some girls, you know, like, oh, I'm getting making time. It's just like, well, did you tell him what you liked? Did you did you help him out at all? Had you met before? Mm-hmm. Does he even know your mm-hmm. last name, let alone where your fucking G spot is? Like, do you know what I mean? Like, it gives, you know, you have to be reasonable in these things. Yeah. Oh, we give so much That's good advice. Right? That's so good. Um, I feel like. Unless you have something further to say about technology, I feel like it's tender as the flesh. Oh, yeah. Also, vibrators are great, and I All recommend right. every female get the doxy wand on that subject. Yeah, I passed a, I passed that recommendation along, and it was appreciated. Oh, wow, oh, great, good. I'm glad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, have I given that out advice out before? I oh, think so. I? Or I don't. Maybe I asked you personally. Maybe maybe, maybe that was. Uh, I forget what we talk about off air and on air. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. So like, sometimes. Have I said this story before. I really need to go back. I, sh- I should have done this from the get go. I'm an idiot for not having done it. I need to go back and listen to our episodes, and I need to make a note of all the stories that I've told so I don't repeat myself. Because <laughs> I do have a tendency to repeat stories, and just generally in life. So mm. I definitely will at some point here. So you have to, you have to keep me in check and tell me. Um, right. Tinder is the flash. Tinder is the new flash. Which actually was mm-hmm. a title we were playing with, wasn't it, for a bit? Um, yeah, that's right. Right, so first off, we have... Just the name alone. Calum, right? Not Callum. Calum, spelled K-A-Y-L-L-U-M. Oh, that's okay. way too much. Like already, already it's a lot of business. Um, yeah. oh, it's... All right. I'm here for a good time, not a long time. Call me daddy because I have three kids that already do. Plus, I eat ass. What more do you... <laughs> oh, yeah. no. Hold on. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, that stopped me in my tracks. All right. <laughs> Can we do that again? Yes, please. I'm here for a good time, not a long time. 
call me daddy because I have three kids that already do. Plus, I eat ass. What more do you need? <laughs> like, why <sighs> would you bring your kids into this? <laughs> that is right. That is a showstopper. You do not. That is not a connotation that you know. <laughs> also as well call me daddy because i ask are you eating at this point because please fucking tell me it's mine you know <laughs> like <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> call me daddy because i have three <laughs> kids who already do and they're gonna be at home while we're fucking <laughs> it's just i i literally i it's not I have been scrolling through TikTok, because also as well, I scroll through, the t- we, we, I don't know if you, if, well, maybe not you, but I don't know if anyone of our listeners or anything calls it playing the Tinder game. But we were like, oh, let's play the Tinder game. <laughs> and we'll just kind of mm-hmm. like scroll through like, yeah, it's like, that's all right, whatever. And it's just like fun looking at people's profiles and shit. But I do it by myself anyway, because A, it's, it's kind of fun to pass the time um, if I'm just like, I don't know, whatever. Um, but also as well, I like to look up the profiles for the show, right, for the segment. And so I see a lot of different stuff. It is rare that I get a, that it gets a, like a double take out of me. Like, what? Did I just fucking read? Like, hang on. Let me fucking do that again. You know? <laughs> and this, yeah, this is, that weird. is, that is like astronomically bad. <laughs> the thing is, he's put an emo like, like a laughing emoji after it. Like he knows he's been, <laughs> it's bad. And he, in a way that makes it worse because it's like you know how that's coming off and like, apparently you just find it funny like and i have a dark sense of humor i do but i draw i draw the line at making jokes about having sex with my kids you know <laughs> it's just not, yeah it's that's it, awful it's, i want to know who's swiping right on this guy like i really do <laughs> yeah right next one yes please <laughs> I'm I'm just he I'm stunned. This way. that was maybe the worst yeah, one we've ever had. Worse than Hitler guy. <laughs> oh yeah, that was, all right. That was yeah. bad. Yeah, this guy was 27. Right, next next guy, Steve, 38, and just spout normal Steve, not with an extra Y or a K instead of an S or anything. <clears throat> oh yeah, no shit. Okay, actually, maybe I. All right, yeah, this is what I was doing. So I went with this one, and then I was like, let's get a polar opposite. Um, Okay. Are you a godly woman with, weirdly, a high heel emoji? Do you desire a godly home? Another high heel emoji. Do you desire to be with Mm -hmm. a godly man? Waiter emoji. Do you desire a decent... And all, all 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 of these words are with a beginning capital letter. Ooh. I don't know why. Yeah, I don't know why it yeah, makes yeah. it worse, but it just does. Do you desire a decent, lovely relationship and see where it goes? Do you desire godly children and then two for each gen, like the cisgendered male, female children emoji? Are you ready? If yes, let's get started. Remember to push right. It just comes off as Oof. like some weird game show. Are you a godly woman? Do yeah. you desire a godly home? Do you desire to be... If, say, <laughs> if, are you ready? If yes, let's get started. What have we got for them, Paul? You know, like... Do you want to have sex with the lights off and socks on? Come on down. It, it was just... And like I said earlier, I'm not about dipping people for their religious beliefs, but it's just the whole setup of this and the odd weird emoji usage and the capital letter usage and... The way that it's just the way it's written is just so bizarre. Yeah, the high heel thing, it like that just sounds like yeah, he's a fetishist. That's what I thought too. But I don't know why you've got a high heel thing um, after des- desire God be home. Do you reckon it's like one of those things where it's like, you know, do you, do you, you, know, you probably saw the thing that went around a while ago where this woman, um, people will pay her to clean her place. <laughs> And it's like a yeah. slave thing and they'll like and she'll dress up in like bondage and stuff and like stand on their backs in stilettos and things while they're scrubbing the floors and stuff and they'll pay her for this privilege kind of thing. And her whole house is fucking spotless. And I'm like, fuck, I am in the wrong job. 
but anyway do you reckon it's like one of those things you reckon maybe maybe, maybe uh, although i think it's less i i think it's less geared towards him being the oh you reckon it's her you know i think the idea is like oh do you want you know uh it's that whole trad right. wife thing wait hang on wait a what? you know of like what's that yeah that you're you uh that you're gonna be like that 50 style oh, housewife right. where you're very thing. like cap- right you kind of capitulate to the man in the house and you're you know putting on makeup just to do the dishes oh and shit yeah like very that. um don't worry darling yeah yeah, yeah 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 got it okay okay yeah yeah, yeah. either way i'm out yeah it just yeah right i i I mean, it's not, uh, let me talk about eating ass at the same time as I talk about my kids, but it's It's not not great. Um, Okay. I'm going to try and talk slowly on this one. (laughs) Okay. Okay, so his name is a bit of a difficult, it's a a, a foreign name, so hang on. Uh, Abhishek, I think. It's called Abhishek, he's 29. Okay. Ready? Hashtag mm-hmm. Air Force Brat. Hashtag KV in. Hashtag MIT in. Hashtag developer at Yardi. Hashtag Coda. Hashtag trekking lover. Hashtag crazy about bikes. Hashtag looking for meaningful relationship. Hashtag not interested in cricket. Hashtag foodie. Hashtag badminton player. Hashtag lazy on weekend. Hashtag workaholic. <laughs> Can you imagine the conversation with this guy? Oh my Does God. that not just want to pull your fucking eye socks out of your face, fucking? And and most I, of them well, as well. He doesn't even yeah. know how a hashtag works because he puts spaces in between the words. Yeah, that's not great. And he doesn't, but he doesn't put spaces uh, in between the hashtags. So like it'll be like the end of one hashtag and immediately go into another hashtag. But then he'll put a space in between the word, like if there's more than one word in said hashtag. Yeah, this is one of those, like, let us, uh, as a service to help clean up your Tinder Mm. profile, you needed to run that past us first. This is, if you want to use a hashtag somewhere in your profile, that is not totally off limits, but it should be A, a joke, or, yeah, or B, it should be for, like, a real cause. Yeah, 100%, yeah, like, hashtag BLM. Right, sure, hashtag yeah me too something you know like something yeah. like that that's fine also why is the first thing that you're advertising about yourself is an air force brat air force yeah that's air also force, not great air force brat like what does that even mean do you know even know what that means like it just y- yeah it typically it means like army brats air force brats yeah. that kind of thing typically it means that you grew up in a military family you moved around a bunch right. yeah. you know that kind of thing it, it's, it's sort of a lifestyle I, like I, the yeah, the school I, uh, where I teach, has, uh, it, it's near a military right. base, so we have a lot of those kinds of kids. But also, it's not, like, that doesn't reveal any, like, if you want to say, um, I was an Air Force brat, that's fine. That doesn't need to be the, the first but, thing, though, does it? Right, the hashtag, air, like, and back it up with something, like, I grew up as an Air Force brat, and I've been all over the world. Okay, well, now I know something yeah, about Yeah, I like you. to travel. I have experienced yeah. many cultures. Great. We all have stuff to talk about. Right. They seem interesting and probably not a bigot. Sure. But just hashtag Air Force mm, Brad. It just tells me that you have attachment y- issues. <laughs> right. And also don't know how to use yeah, that. Apparently so. Yeah. I mean, like, Jesus. Also, what? Okay. Can I ask that? But- what is hashtag KVN? So it's capital K, capital V, I A N. Do you know what this is? KVN. I, I, v for Victor. Okay. KVN. Uh, let's see if there's any. I, oh, wait. Yeah. Okay. There's. Uh, I don't know whether it's a school because he immediately follows it with an MIT. And so assuming that's MIT college. Right. So. Uh, it, it appears to be an Indian school. Oh, okay. That makes sense because I think the guy is. Uh, yeah, it's, it's West Asian, I think is what we're saying. Okay. No. Yeah. So that is apparently an actual hashtag. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Um, we got one. 
happens to he got one. Kintria Vidalias. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it seems to be like an Indian uh, school. Okay, cool, cool. Of some okay sort. that's fine. I just I just had never seen it. So um, okay, and then it's just all about okay, and then but it's like you could like developer you're like you don't have to hashtag that. I mean, you don't have to hashtag any of this, but I, I actively recommend you don't. But it's just like not interested yeah. in cricket. Is that because you're from India and there's like what are you assuming about people that they're assuming about you just because of your national? Like that just seems odd to me. Like that seems defensive. And maybe for good reason. Maybe everyone he's met is like, oh, you must love cricket because you know you're from India or whatever. But and then it's just mm-hmm. like it's just all this stuff. It's so like you don't need all these hashtags. You just don't. It's so weird. He also doesn't know how to spell about. How ABT, does he spell it? Which I would put down as like text, like goes like, Ooh. you know, internet speak or whatever, like, you know, abbreviations, but he hasn't abbreviated a single other thing, including weekend, which is so easy to abbreviate. Or like, um, like long term relationship or whatever. It could be like LTR and stuff, but he's literally not really shortened anything else so i'm just assuming he doesn't know how to spell about so all that mit education <laughs> but yeah 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 right mit apparently did not tell you about the proper use of apparently hashtags not. Oh, he's a coder as well so you would think that he would he would be more savvy with that you would you think. would think yeah the, this yeah, is, is all a big mess. mess so yeah so we have inappropriate yeah. properly pos- properly pro- possibly incestuous daddy <laughs> Daddy oh Kalen. god. We have yeah. wannabe Stepford husband. Game, slash yeah. game show host. And then we have hashtag fucking I don't know, I can't think of a hashtag that's relevant, but fucking hashtag stop. Yeah. Ha- hashtag, hashtag, hashtag hashtag. Yeah. Oh. Um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, oh boy, this mm-hmm. is a real, this may be the worst crap yeah. we've ever had. I'm quite pleased with myself. I'm not um, <laughs> okay, so I'm, oh man, I'm probably going to go, like the best choice is probably right, hashtag yeah. guy. And I mean, that's not I mean, a that's great a, place a to be. Isn't there? Like, you know, it's not a very big one either. Yeah. So <laughs> we get what we can get. <laughs> um, so there's that hashtag guy is probably yeah, number one. Agreed. Number two, oh, oh, man. I see, I, for, uh, for for everything that's screaming at me, no, I might have to say Daddy Kalen because at least he is probably all right in bed. Whereas game show host Stepford is probably yeah. the most white bread, vanilla, as you say, lights on socks. Lights off, socks on, and I can't live like that. <laughs> right, At no least one can. if like I um, can infiltrate the wrongdoing with Daddy Calum and like you know help the kids, whilst also getting my ass eaten, you know that would, yeah. you know I can do some good there too. <laughs> I can do some good. <laughs> I think, yeah, I th- you've you've kind of won me over on this one. I think I'm with yeah. you. I think that. I think Stepford guy is a little too creepy and it's He's not like you can't even get a good date out of that. Um, like I think <laughs> you could get like, this has got Jim Jones written all over it. Yeah, you can. <laughs> right. He like, there are flavor ads, uh, <laughs> flavor eight ads on his profile. Um, he says, I looking think for new friends. I, I like Ugh. slash of cults. <laughs> <laughs> right. I need followers. Yeah. I mean friends. Yeah. Um but yeah, I think I think call me daddy guy, maybe that guy is like a you sit down conversation away from being okay where you're just like, Look, dude, you can't yeah, do this. Yeah, or maybe just you like, cannot dude, I know you thought that was hilarious because of your overuse of laughing emojis, but let me just tell you something. It is not. Yeah, this is not okay. You should not be yeah, joking about this. Yeah, you also shouldn't be joking about this with your face on the thing because you will get social sentences around. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. 
with your yeah. like, location um, and name and, and a very unusual name so it won't be hard to track you down my friend <laughs> <laughs> right we can yeah. find you um uh okay boy that was rough that was a rough one <laughs> yeah oh i don't feel good about any of that <laughs> um oof. boy tinder is just a hive of scum and villainy oh, isn't it, it is. yeah absolutely absolutely Either, I, it, it does make uh, me chuckle. Stuff, you know, I prefer stuff I like not. that than the boring, like, got three kids in there, my world. Oh, I just want, like, a nice normal. I just, like, oh, fucking boring. I was like, oh. Right. I, no, I, that's not what that's for. Like, that's a dating yeah. site kind of thing. That's not Tinder, as I understand it, at least. I, I mean, don't but use you Tinder, can but... get relationships. Like, you know, one of my mates found her husband um, on Tinder. It, it does it does happen right it's just that's not it's, but did they hook up initially to fuck maybe i can't remember it was a good yeah. 10 years ago so i mean that's always what just what i've associated yeah. tinder with is like tinder I mean, you is don't the go there for, they, that, that's not your primary concern when you're on tinder is it right like you just you know you know you should be fucking right you should be fucking yeah like that is yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. um all right well um uh, okay i've just i feel so dirty now <laughs> um let's uh let's wrap yeah. her up here kate um and uh i'm just man this whole uh, my kids <laughs> really call me daddy is it? just it's it really has fucked <laughs> with me kids um <laughs> It's just like, why on earth did you think this was okay to do? Um, <laughs> all right. So uh, we'll be back in a month yeah. to talk about more of this. And, and I should have well, recovered hopefully. by then. I'll check in. Um, and also, I am curious. Uh, you know, we talked a lot about just the, the influence of technology on, you know, sex and relationships here. And I'm curious if anyone listening has a story about that because I would be fascinated to hear how people have kind of wrapped relationships around the dig digital age a little yeah. bit because it's something that i've i've thought about a lot lately ever since i watched video drum the other day i've been like i wonder like how does that change just the very fabric the essential nature of a relationship and and how how digital can you be and still be in something that is uh mm. real you know um and not just and i don't even mean just parasocial but like something that is you know something more than just like hey i've got a girlfriend in canada kind of thing oh that felt targeted at me <laughs> no 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 oh well i did i didn't mean you in particular <laughs> but i mean but you know what's funny like obviously you know. ours is not a sexual relationship but like i was thinking about me and sabrina about Yet. like <laughs> about me and sabrina like how we've just formed this entire bond purely over the internet we've never yeah. met and we think about something like i'm going out in october she's actually coming i can't remember if i've said this on air or not. she's gonna come and live with me next year for six months um and i've literally like it we kind of said like how have we we've never shared space we've never seen each other in real mm -hmm. life i've never heard your voice that isn't a form of recording like i mean even if i'm talking on like like we are now kind of thing it's still like through an electronic system i've never heard her voice right. organically she's never heard my voice organically and yet she is one of the people i'm most closest to on this earth is that not bizarre yeah i mean well that's you know the brian oblivion thing right like you're how, how do you know that she is not just a videotape on a shelf but is that you getting me back for fucking Daddy Caleb? Oh, you're a mm -hmm. asshole. You're a fucking bitch. Yep. I fucking hate her. <laughs> <laughs> no, she is not Sabrina Coy. <laughs> oh, that's, no, don't fucking... You, oh, it's, too, it's too late. It's 3 a.m. here. I've had four hours sleep last night. Like, I'm, I can't deal with that. No, no, no. No. I'll, I'll think about that in the morning when I can be more rational. <laughs> um 
All right. Well, so let me ask you this then. Uh, where can people get more out of oh, you, Oh, yeah. Kate? I always forget about that. Um, yes. So I have another sh show called Eternal Darkness of Not So Spotless Minds uh, or Edenism, as we tend to say, because that's a mouthful. Not the kind I like. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, so you can find us on all the usual places. Um, that's Apple, Spotify, Google, Stitcher. Anywhere basically you listen. <clears throat> and it's just uh, me and my, my, my friend and co-host Matt. And we just uh, chat about two movies, one pre-2000, one post-2000. And we have funny segments and games. And it's just a bunch of shenanigans. And we take the piss out of each other and drink. Basically, the show. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds it's like just, a it's good, good time. Fun. Yeah, it is good fun. <laughs> yeah. We think we're funny anyway. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and of course, if you are listening to this, you're already a subscriber of the dark parade and I appreciate it. And, uh, next week is, uh, it's one of them, what you yes. watching episodes yes. with me and Jamie. And, um, and we've been talking a lot lately about Frank Langella. Oh yeah. Yeah. Nice. Are you going to be talking about it in this episode? Oh, I don't know, intrigued. but probably it's, it's come up a lot and, and. Uh, in terms of him potentially being the sexiest of all Draculas. Mm, maybe. Yeah, you know, I mean, the, the Gary Oldman is a run for the money. Christopher Lee is real good. But Frank Langella was like the first Dracula where I was like, oh, that Dracula let fucks. Just, let me just check. Uh, uh. Yeah, he's got great hair in it too. Um, it's just yeah, this is what I thought. It just it's the hair that puts me off. It just gives me Tom Jones vibes. Well, sure. No, it's not. It's not unusual to be bit um, by you. I mean, I you know what? He's sexier than Nick Cage. I'll give you that. <laughs> sure, sure. I didn't um, really find any of the the like not even gary oldman i don't know i don't really find him that sexy do you know actually who is the sexiest actually dracula and buffy oh he's yeah sexy. that was a pretty a pretty I sexy mean, dracula not, again not a fan of the hair but there was yeah. a certain je ne sais quoi like there was a bit of a sex appeal going on there didn't he have kind of a like a goatee kind of business no, happening no, he, it was, he was clean shaven he just had very dark penetrative eyes seems like that does buffy but he had these like yeah. long scent, like there, it's snape hair basically. It wasn't greasy. It was actually very fluffy looking, but like it was like that long center <laughs> parting, like long hair, like you know, uh -huh. covering the ears, just coming straight down with a center parting kind of thing, which I wasn't really a fan of. But he had this really like sexy foreign accent. It was just like look into yourself, something like that. I think that was supposed <laughs> to be Transylvania. It came off more maybe French, probably not even French. I, I think it just came off like horny. <laughs> oh, it's been a week, so oh god, it's been that week. Yeah, Nine I'm days. not sure if horny is an accent. If it does, but... that's what it is. You're right. <laughs> um, all right. Well, uh, I think that'll wrap idiot. it up. Uh, yeah, we've given like honestly, we've given this audience way too much information in a single episode. When like did this, we not? This needs to be, <laughs> yeah. But this in particular needs to be picked apart and studied and taught in colleges. <laughs> Oh my god! Uh, it, uh, whatever that course is, I want to get in on it. <laughs> All right. Well, look for it uh, in your like, college catalogs your this MT, fall. MIT and your K KV. You're, if you're yeah. a KVN, then check out the Video Drome oh. Heart, uh, Heart of Horror podcast uh, class. It, it's it, you know, it's sort of like when they take those movies minute <laughs> by minute. It's going to be like yeah. that. Well, anyone who's in that class, you are welcome. Enjoy. Yeah. Right. It starts off kind of sad. Then yeah. it gets horny. And then it just gets mind-boggling. My, my normal so, Friday night, honestly. So, uh, Honestly, it's every sexual <laughs> experience I've <laughs> I ever had. I end with sad because it's usually me crying on the end of the bed because I've not had a fucking orgasm. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mind-boggling is where <laughs> I land. Like, holy shit she let me do it <laughs> that reminds me of like the song i just had sex by lonely island 
Yeah. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to. Yeah, I'm, that's anyone, quite just good. Just go check that song out because it's hilarious. And then you'll also know what I mean yeah. with that reference if you don't know it. Cool. That sounds, yeah, sounds good. I think we've done, we, we came here today. Excellent. All right. Well, bye, everybody. Bye. Then. <laughs> <laughs>